G'day viewers, how are you? I hope I'm finding you well. Just wanted to do a quick video on uh, something that happened to me fairly recently. Uh, very strange. Uh, it seems to me as though um, the way we're traveling in this world at the moment with all the things that are happening, you know, uh, uh, evil and disastrous things that are happening around the world, uh, that evil as such is becoming more brash or brazen in kind of coming out and showing its face or showing itself in public. Um, you know, I've watched YouTube footage of uh, what looked like a zombie woman in Mexico recently. To me, when I looked at the video footage, it looked uh, what I would describe as a demonic possession. You know, the person's body being contorted uh, in unnatural ways, such that even the police in Mexico that were pursuing this person behaving strangely and erratically um, were frightened away by it, actually ran from it. The person who exhibited extremely bizarre behaviour, contorted body positions and strange unnatural noises. Um, Mexican zombie incident, you can probably check that out on YouTube, quite shocking, but a manifestation no doubt of evil, and one of uh, more to come, dare say it, as we uh, approach the biblical end times. I wanted to just uh, mention my own personal encounter with um, something I believe was evil fairly recently, um, just on my daily but actually my nightly commute, because I'm a night shift worker. I was driving to work down some major roads that I normally travel down. Uh, it, was f it was almost shortly after the start of my journey from home. So I got in my car from home late in the evening, about, say, 20 to 10 at night, and uh, just driving down my normal roads, uh, crossed over a main highway, uh, and then turned left onto a road heading down towards the freeway and um, I stopped at a traffic light and uh, there was a vehicle in the lane beside me to my right looking out of my uh, driver's uh, side window it was a large white four-wheel drive type of vehicle and um, I was just uh, parked at the traffic light looking forward down the road ahead down the road waiting for the um, the light to change and um, I wasn't paying attention to the vehicle beside me but for a brief moment I saw and heard a face uh, which came out of the passenger side uh, front side window uh, like a peekaboo type of appearance of a face but the face I couldn't see it directly it was only there very briefly um, like a peekaboo type of situation something flashes out and then uh, disappears again but I heard uh, a voice a rasping sort of voice and it basically said I believe I heard it use my one of my childhood nicknames so I had a nickname when I was uh, a boy, uh, which was kind of generated by my siblings, my step-siblings. I used to wear this snake tail shirt around, you know, the, um, maybe you haven't heard of it, maybe it might be an Australian-based cartoon, uh, used to appear in the newspapers called Snake Tails, and uh, one of the main characters in it is this yellow snake that has very long fangs on it. Very long sort of um, incisor of fangs drooping down. Um, and I had a t-shirt when I was a boy with um, the snake tails snake on it. And uh, it may have been that in, you know, in a couple of other different things related to my name. Silly rhyming games. Chris rhymes with hiss. Snakes hiss and snakes have got fangs. And at some point um, I ended up with the nickname Fang. Maybe it was because of the nickname that I got the t-shirt with the snake fang thing on it or 
I had already gotten it, and that was what inspired the nickname. But in any case, my childhood nickname was Fang. And um, I heard this um, voice when I, when I didn't see the face full on. I just It just flashed in my peripheral vision. But the face was an unnatural colour. I mean, even if a face flashes in your peripheral vision, you, you do make out some of it briefly things like the color you know i would have known if it was say for example an african person's face as opposed to a caucasian person's face there would be a distinctive difference in the color that i saw i would have either seen a black face or i would have seen um you know the kind of pinkish colored caucasian face like mine uh, or whatever an asian face but it would have had a distinctive uh, skin color um and I, but the the color the skin color of this was completely unnatural it was a light gray complexion rather like the color of my hair only the entire face was that color or the color of my glasses um frame light gray like the classic um gray aliens so that that was the color of the face that I saw but as i say it only flashed in my peripheral vision briefly I couldn't make out features of it, but such that it was um, a startling kind of reaction. <clears throat> you know, like when you get when you open a door and you see something unexpected, or you're watching a horror movie and some horrible face flashes on the thing and it gives you a heart start. You know, your heart is startled briefly. So it, it was a heart startling moment. Like this thing flashed out of the corner of my eye, and I heard this rasping voice use my nickname it didn't just say fang though it said fang e it was like i put a y on the end of my name fang, fang, like that fang. and it flashed out briefly and startled me gave me a heart attack and but then i turned my attention to the uh vehicle beside me and the windscreen on the passenger side was rolled down but i could no longer see a face in the window couldn't see into the window because the height of the four-wheel drive vehicle above my Corolla uh, is quite high. Those four-wheel drive vehicles are high off the ground and you can't see directly into the um, uh, passenger side side window. You can't see people in there necessarily. Um, you just see an empty window. That's what I saw, an empty window. And that was the extent of the incident. That Whatever it was, it didn't flash its face out again at me. Then the traffic light changed and I, and I drove off as per normal. So that was the extent of, of the incident of um, what I would describe as a peekaboo demon. Now, why something uh, demonic or a demonically possessed person would do that, I have no idea. Why scare someone like that just seems purely for the, for the fun of it, I suppose. But the fact that um, that something demonic um, is brash enough now to briefly show its face in public like that, you know, to pop up and scare you, um, is, a, is a frightening prospect. Because it goes from popping up and scaring you briefly uh, to being completely out in public, uh, horrifying, terrifying people. So I think now is a time... <laughs> Uh, for us as Christians to be in full repentance, uh, full repentance now, uh, we are definitely watching and waiting for the return, the imminent return of Jesus. And I think as we get towards these end times, and if we are not already, uh, if we soon enter into the, the period of the Great Tribulation, I believe we're going to see a lot more uh, evil things happening in public and evil manifesting itself. So brace yourselves, be prepared um, for what is to come. I just want to pray for people um, that are out there in the world now suffering, for the people in Ukraine, uh, you know, for all the people that have been affected by natural floods and disasters, um, and just hold them in my prayers and thoughts, and I encourage you to do the same. And I pray these things... Uh, in the mighty name of Isho. Apparently that is the actual correct 
pronunciation for uh, our Lord and Saviour, who we've come to know as Jesus. In fact, the correct Aramaic pronunciation of his name is Esho. It's not Jesus. So Esho of Nazareth. Uh, I pray all my prayers in his mighty name. Amen. God bless you all.